Welcome to this beautiful place. As I stand here, I can hear the birds singing and smell the fragrance of flowers. We're told all of creation sings praises to our God. This day, we are going to remember a story that is from long ago, the story of young men going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Along the way, they encounter something amazing, a moment where they see and experience Jesus as he opens up the Old Testament scriptures to them. As part of that, we're at a crossroads here. We have a road next to us as a reminder of the journey they were on, and you and I are called to be on a journey as well. Part of that journey is to realize where God is in our life and to experience that. And to do so, then I would invite you to pray with me that God would ins inspire us through these words. Holy One, in these moments I pray that you come, that your Spirit would empower all of us as we are here to know the truth of your coming. Help us to live our lives in harmony with your spirit. And as we are here together in this moment, help us to know the surety of your peace that you alone can bring. We are thankful for the resurrection and for what that means for us. May we live into it in this time. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Of my Savior, I will come. 
What an incredible week. We began with the resurrection and the celebration of Jesus' coming. Today we enter into another chapter of, of the unfolding of what it means for Jesus' resurrection when two of, the, of his disciples go from Jerusalem down to Emmaus. Now it's about a seven mile journey along a pathway and along the way they encounter a man who then they eventually discover is Jesus himself. They are uncertain what is going on in Jerusalem and you will hear in the story that many are uncertain of what is, it, what is going to evolve. Let me read to you from Luke chapter 24, the story that is unfolding this day. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other while all these things had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And as he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you were walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that are taking place here these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those were with us, went to the tomb, and found it as just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, and then enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Those early disciples had walked along with Jesus, Eventually, it looked like he was going to continue on, and they invited him to join them for the evening. They gathered around a fire, and there Jesus broke bread. And it was in the breaking of the bread that they discovered that it was he, the one who had risen. Again, in those moments, they experienced a warm-hearted sense of what had occurred that day, that the scriptures had been opened to them. And it was only looking back then, after Jesus vanished, that they realized the extent to which God had, in fact, walked with them. Those are moments that I think all of us encounter, uh, places that I call touchstone moments, where God has in fact moved in our life, and then it's only looking back on them that we realize that it was God's hand. I'd like to have some individuals share with you some of their touchstone moments as well. And as they do so, perhaps you can reflect on your own life and remember times that God has touched you and graced you as well. You kind of look back and think of the times that you didn't think you were going to make it through something. And, um, and then um, through prayer and uh, understanding and, and people listening to you and caring about you and you come out the other side, so much of the time, so much, um, um, so much better and so much um, and have so much to be thankful for. Uh, I think life is a lot that way all the way through, uh, whether it's uh, your marriage or um, having children, raising children. Um, I just feel like um, a lot of times you you kind of forget that prayer is there, but then you realize, oh, well, maybe God needs to know about this. Maybe God needs to know how I feel about this. And um, and whenever I, I do go to that point in my life, then I feel comfort and feel safe. And, and then looking back on it, you feel like, yes, God was in that particular place at that time. And um, I, yeah, just so <laughs> grateful and thankful. We're Michael and Eugenia Hennessy. We're longtime friends of Pastor Dan. I was shot in Nam. I had an out-of-body experience, out-of-body experience. 
I was pronounced dead. Mm. And when I came to and got through the next few days of everything, I knew I was missing something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm. And, uh, you know, Eugenia eventually showed me what it was. One I think of is when she was in for surgery in 2010. The first time she went for surgery, it was uh, November, and the in the prep room, she had shingles. And everyone was going, no big deal. They were making marks around the shingles and ignoring the shingles, they were going to do the surgery. There was a young lady there who was a uh, anesthesiologist resident, supposed to. And she said, this isn't right, this isn't right, this isn't right. And she left and she got the surgeon who came in still in his suit. And he went, oh no, and he sent us home until the shingles were over. The next time I saw her, my wife was in ICU. They did not think she was going to make it through. I was in the hall terrified down by the um, cafeteria. And this gal appeared, put her hand on my shoulders and said, it's going to be all right, Mr. Hennessy. I'll stop by her room on my way up. Everything is going to be all right. Mm. Later on, when we asked about her, no one knew about her. Wow. No and one. Always think, you know, that was Jesus in our life. An angel, yes, because nobody knew about her. Mm. Wow. You've now heard several witnesses to the resurrection, first being an ancient one where the disciples, as they walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus, experienced the risen Lord. Through the stories of the Old Testament, as we understand it, they discovered all the more what it meant for his coming and how he had to suffer and die and the resurrection and what that meant. It was a time of traveling along a road, just like this one, where they discovered what that meant. We're at a crossroad as well, each one of us. Are we going to be open to what God is saying to us? The next several stories, I believe, are places where persons experience that crossroad, where Myrna, in her day-to-day -day experience, has a sense of God's presence through loved ones around her, through gathering around the table with her family, through the breaking of bread as well with those she loves, and through the witnesses of the many that come and talk with her about how God has moved in their life. Are you open to those as well in your life? Are you willing to see and be awakened to God's movement this day? in your life. The last two stories from Mike, the first of which is a moment where he had experienced a tremendous darkness, having been in Nam and shot. Mike had died in Vietnam. And in those moments, he had an out-of-body experience. It is through that moment that he realized that there was something beyond this life. It isn't just our day-to-day -day experience. And through his loving wife, Jeannie, he came to know Christ. The next story is about Jeannie and how she had a moment where she was experiencing illness and was close to dying as well, had gone in for surgery, and the surgery was halted because of a technician that said uh, and indicated to the doctors the severity of her shingles. The next place was when Mike returned with his wife and uh, her condition had worsened, and the same person showed up when Mike was uh, walking through the hospital and laid her hand upon his shoulder and said, it will be okay, Mike. It will be okay. I'll go see Jeannie. And she was. On further discovery, Mike tried to find this woman to thank her. And no one had seen her or knew who he was talking about. As he indicated, it was an angel, someone sent from God, that was an ambassador to them both at that time. Not everyone experiences those moments. But all of us are called to know moments where we can look back in our rear mirror of our life and see God's handies work. Are you going to live your day, this day, and be open to those very moments where God touches you, or places where God's love holds you, where God's friendship accompanies you through those around you, perhaps through phone calls that come to you? Even now, as we are in this moment, God's Spirit reaching out to you and calling to you. 
May you know the blessing of God's love this day, even as those early disciples proclaim and witness to the resurrection. May your life as well be a witness to the resurrection in these moments. As we conclude our time together, even though we may go our separate ways, know the God that created you will continue to hold you. May the blessing of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. May God's infinite love carry you in all your actions throughout this coming week. And as you continue on your journey like I will, know that you are not alone, that God will journey with you.